Good morning. Welcome to the Wichita Police Department Inner Watch. It is Thursday, December the 7th. We have one case that we're going to talk about today. It's an aggravated battery case. And then I have an announcement today with the 23rd Annual Battle of the Badges. So we have representatives from the American Red Cross, EMS, fire, and police here that will be talking about the kickoff of the Battle of the Badges this year. So it'll be an exciting announcement there. And then Lieutenant Jose O'Cadies will be coming up in just a few minutes to give us some updates on some fires, that uh, recent fires, and uh, one from this morning. And they also have a PSA they're going to be discussing uh, this morning with local media as well. So let's get right to it. First case number is going to be 17C83397. It's an aggravated battery case. This occurred at Lincoln and Market <clears throat> yesterday morning about 1030 in the morning. Wednesday, December 6, approximately 1030, officers responded to an injury accident at Lincoln and Market. A 56-year-old male had received critical injuries in this accident and was transported to an area hospital for medical treatment. Through the investigation, it was learned a 69-year-old male was driving a 2000 Ford Econoline van along with a 53-year-old male passenger, and he was stopped at Lincoln and Market waiting for a green light. <clears throat> Behind the van was a 1999 Toyota Avalon occupied by three individuals, being a 52-year-old male, 56-year-old male, and a 31-year-old male. A 21-year-old female was driving northbound on market in a white 2000 Mercury Grand Marquis. The 21-year-old female drove into the back of the Toyota, pushing it into the van, causing serious injuries to the 56-year-old male who was in the Toyota. The investigation showed that this was an intentional act and the female was arrested and booked into jail for three counts of aggravated battery and outstanding warrants. Charlie, yes. Who was she intending? Uh, she intended to hit the vehicles. Both of them? Uh, well, she intended to hit the, the first vehicle and then it drove it into the second vehicle, correct? Who inside was she targeting? Uh, the investigation done showed she knew these individuals or was targeting anybody in specific, but this was an intentional act. Well, I can't get into the specifics of exactly uh, the investigation it goes, but we could determine through the investigation that was an intentional act. Was there, was there some sort of road rage? Can you talk about uh, that? There, there was not any road rage. And again, I, I can't get into the specifics of the investigation other than the fact that it was an intentional act when she struck the vehicle, and that's why she was booked for the three counts of aggravated battery. Is she related to any of these victims? No. Boyfriend, girlfriend, no? No. Is there any reason to believe that? <clears throat> No. No. Why? Why would we why would we think that? That this what led to, I mean if she did, if there was no relation. Right. Why? Well and and I, I I can't get into all the specifics as we're still gonna have to present a case for charging. Uh, so I can't get into all the specifics of the case and but what I'm saying is through the investigation of this we could determine that it was a an intentional act and that's why she was booked for that ray battery. I don't believe so. What about texting and driving? Not that I know of. All right. Uh, let's uh, now. I'm going to introduce uh, our battle of the badges. As you can see, as you can see, we have a little bit different of a uh, background here. We're on the first floor boardroom uh, with uh, some different uh, uh, projection systems and things like that. But we also have some. Uh, well, I don't know what you call these, uh, squeeze balls. Okay, we have squeeze balls up here, representative of fire, EMS, and um, uh, police for the 23rd Annual Battle of the Badges. So I want to introduce Norma Dixon, who is the market manager for the American Red Cross, who's going to come up and talk to us a little bit about the Battle of the Badges. So Thank please. You. Thank you. Thanks for letting us be here, too. Um, I am here to announce the kickoff of the American Red Cross, the 23rd annual Wichita Sedgwick County Battle of the Badges. And the reason we have the Battle of the Badges during the holiday season is because a lot of people are busy and they just forget to donate blood. 
So we've come together with Law, Fire, and EMS. Um, we have five different departments involved, and we'll introduce them here in just a second. Um, and we come together with all of them to see who can bring in the most blood donors. And it's for blood and platelet donors. And of course, they win the lovely trophy here. Um, they're pretty competitive. So it's, it's a fun event. Over the last 22 years, we've actually collected more than 26,000 units of blood. So, and that's just for this campaign alone, which typically runs two to three weeks during the holiday season. So it's a very important time for us to get this kind of support from our different departments. Um, the kickoff is actually on Monday, so it's December 11th. We're gonna have all the officials down at about 11.30, donating blood and just kind of mixing and mingling. And the public is welcome to come. We open at 8 o'clock a.m. so you can come and donate blood or platelets starting Monday. And then the campaign runs through December 31st. So it runs all the way through the end of the year. And of course, it's at the Red Cross at Maine and Murdoch right next to the fire station, which is not a plug for any certain department. Um, but we're also across the street from EMS Dispatch. So there you go. Um, so we're, we're close downtown here. Um, we invite everybody to come down. We have various hours, and you can make an appointment on redcrossblood.org, call 1-800-RED-CROSS, or you can download the blood donor app to make your appointment as well. So we make it as easy as possible for you guys to give blood, and now I'm going to turn it over to the different departments to introduce themselves. Norma, can you spell your name for us? Sure, it's Norma Dixon, D-I-X-O-N. Yes, that's correct. Hi there, my name is Captain Chris Fleming with the Wichita Fire Department. This is, uh, we'll put over here since we need to kind of help support the whole crew here. This is uh, Battle of the Badges, Bob, B-O-B, -B, Bob, spelled backwards. Okay. As, a, uh, as a member of the Wichita Fire Department, and really all of us in uniform know the importance and the satisfaction of helping others when really their greatest time of need. Um, the amazing thing about the Battle of the Badges is that anyone can become a hero this holiday season. Um, donating blood is very easy. It only takes about an hour. And with every donation, you have the ability and the possibility to uh, impact up to three different patients. So come out, give the gift of life this holiday season. Help support Bob right here and uh, vote for the fire department. You guys want my name spelled and everything? Uh, Lieutenant Scott Bruno, B-R-U-N-O-W with the Wichita Police Department. As a member of the Wichita Police Department, uh, police officers on almost a daily basis see people in the need uh, for blood, be it car accidents or other critical incidents that happen. The need for blood is constant. When you give blood, the gratification is instant. So come down, whether you're a first time donor or a continuing donor, come out during the Battle of the Badges, give blood. Ultimately, I say it doesn't matter who you vote for, it's more about donating blood, but when you do, come out and vote law. <laughs> Hello, good morning. My name is Philip Thompson. I'm a paramedic for Central County EMS. Um, every two seconds, someone in the nation is in the need of a blood product, and the public safety family is there to see that firsthand. Uh, this holiday season, we urge you to come out and donate blood with your family and give the gift of life and potentially help someone that, that needs uh, assistance. Um, so come down and go to the Red Cross and sign up for an appointment online and vote EMS. Good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Firefighter Jeremiah Christofferson with Cedric County Fire District 1. Um, I think everybody's kind of hit uh, the main goal for us coming together and requesting people to come down, uh, the community to come down and pitch in. We really can't, this can't be a, a success without you guys coming and showing support. Uh, while you're there, you can go ahead and vote for fire law or EMS. The, uh, Biggest reason most people don't donate is because they've never been asked. So this is your um, first responding community asking you uh, to come out, donate, possibly save a life. Hey there, it's me again, Captain Chris Fleming with the Wichita Fire Department. 
Um, our representative from the sheriff's department, evidently they would taken a nap, so we'll just let him lay down there. The, uh, they decided not to show up today, so I'm back. Um, only 38% of the population are able to donate blood, and of those, a very few percentage actually do donate. So again, during this holiday season, when traditionally people get busy, um, we want you to really consider coming out. Um, it's really easy, and um, again, donate the gift of life. You can make an impact, and you can really have that positive effect on somebody when they're really in their greatest need. Um, the great thing about donating blood is you can donate every two months. So come out, donate, make your reservation, uh, make your appointment to come out and donate. Vote for the fire department, and have a very Merry Christmas. I wanted to say a couple of last things. Um, we do have a commemorative t-shirt for everyone who comes out to donate. So this is our 23rd t-shirt for the Battle of the Badges. Um, so definitely a collectible. And then what I also wanted to say is that it's really important that we have first-time donors come out. We have a lot of people who are dedicated to donating blood, like Chris said, every two months. And actually platelets you can donate 24 times a year, so every two weeks. Um, so we have people who are very dedicated to that, but we have very few first-time donors in the system. So we want to encourage people, if you've never considered donating blood or if you have considered, this is the time to do it. Just take that step. It takes about 45 minutes to get through the process. If you go to redcrossblood.org slash rapid pass, you can actually save about 20 minutes because you get to answer all the health history questions in the privacy of your own home. So we make it as easy as possible for you to give. And again, call 1-800-RED-CROSS, make your appointment. It runs December 11th through the 31st. And come out, get a t-shirt, and vote for your favorite civil servants. Thank you. Uh, sure, ma'am. So they can vote for law, fire, EMS? Correct, the three different ones. And then um, can you tell us who the winners were in 16, 15, and 14? Oh, I don't have that information now, but I bet they can tell me. EMS won last year. The two years prior to that was fire. So it's right now is sitting at 12. Yes. Police are at 9. And EMS, okay. I was going to say fire is at 12, police right are at 9. Yeah, right now the uh, tally is uh, fire has 12 wins, uh, PD has 9, and EMS, well, they have 1. <laughs> so. EMS has only been with us for three years, so one out of three is pretty darn good. We think it was kind of a mercy vote to kind of get them to come back, but that's okay. That's just personal. Huh? Uh, but the, really, the true winners are all the recipients of the blood drive, of the blood drive. Products. Um, actually, we're doing hashtag vote and then the department that you want. So it would be hashtag vote EMS, hashtag vote law, hashtag vote fire. Good questions. Any more? All right. All right. Thank you for everybody coming and sharing a great way to give back, especially during this holiday season. And again, oh, yes. vote law. Vote, oh, I'm sorry. Vote law. Vote law. I'm sorry. So I will hand it over to uh, Lieutenant uh, Jose Ocades, who will be talking about an uh, update on some fires. Vote fire. Sleeping, napping, donut shop. <laughs> Good morning, Lieutenant Jose O'Kays, Wichita Fire Department. Um, wanted to give a couple updates on uh, fire. The fire crew's been uh, quite busy uh, yesterday. We had three working fires. Um, the first one I want to talk about is at 1906 North Arkansas. Uh, initially dispatched to a reported house fire. Squad 7, the first arriving company, found heavy fire in the front of the residence. Um, extending into the side of the structure. <clears throat> they made an aggressive attack and also a, a, a search and rescue efforts. All residents were accounted for. They were able to escape outside of the exterior, the back door, um, to safety. Um, the, cause of the, the, this cause, the cause of this fire was basically um, electro malfunction. And uh, they had numerous uh, power strips going to an extension cord to the exterior of the front of the house with a three adapter prong plugged into a deep freezer, refrigerator, and Christmas lights. Again, we cannot emphasize the importance of daisy chaining and piggybacking will cause fires, and this was the number one cause of this fire here. Um, total loss of $90,000, um, $60,000 to the structure, and $30,000 to the contents of the structure or inside the house. 
Second fire I um, want to speak about is at 4925 East Shady Brook Lane. Um, this, this fire came in at 1848 hours. Uh, it's a three-story apartment building. First arriving uh, crew, Station 10, arrived on scene having fire showing from the second floor of a three-story apartment building. Due to the size of this apartment building, they had to stretch a total um, excess of 450 feet of hose to be able to get access to the uh, involved apartment building or the apartment itself. Um, the founder cause of the fire inside was just room and contents, and the cause of it was um, unattended candles. The occupant of the apartment left the, uh, left the residence for a short period of time and basically they had candles uh, close to combustible material which caused uh, the room and contents to on fire and um, to damage of the structure was fifteen thousand and five thousand dollars to the contents on that fire um, due to the to the large size of the uh, complex um, we did have to rescue a couple individuals using our aerial uh, truck three bucket and also ground ladders that we were able to get into safety from the second floor near that uh, involved apartment com uh, involved apartment. Was that apartment the one that was yes, it was only that one. Um, there is some damage to the one right underneath it due to the water damage. Um, uh, we did uh, place some tarps to try to protect their personal belongings as much as possible. But the, as the fire itself, it was just in the involved fire apartment. And the second or the third fire that we want to talk about it was uh, given updates at 2526 East 9th. That one came in last night at 2004 hours. Um, initially, the fire was uh, dispatched as a shed fire. Um, truck 2 was the first arriving company on scene and upgraded that call to a building fire. It was a uh, 20 by 50 metal um, building that was fully involved next to a single family dwelling with exposures. Uh, they made an aggressive attack due to the size of the building and the involvement of the fire. We had to go with defensive operations till we were able to get uh, better control over it, and then we made access inside of the residence. Uh, the cause of the fire was uh, unattended chimney. Uh, the individual uh, next to the to the metal house or metal building was uh, utilizing a chimney throughout the day, and they put in a couple more logs. They went to church that evening. And basically, uh, it was unattended, and some embers um, caught some things, uh, some exposure, some items, combustible materials around it, and caused the initial fire started between the two, the single family dwelling in the building, uh, which um, spread to the building, and there was some damage to the single family dwelling on the exterior from exposure. Uh, damage on this would be uh, 65000 total, um, $40,000 for the building, and $25,000 for the contents. Due to the fact that we are in the middle of the holiday season, um, again, importance on fire safety from candles to uh, decorating your homes, having appropriate uh, two ways out of your house and not over-decorating that you're blocking means of egress. Um, the Wichita Fire Department, along with our communication team, um, developed a, a new PSA to promote um, the importance of fire safety during the holidays. Um, we invite all media outlets to share on Facebook and Twitter our video and just to be able to promote safety throughout uh, the holiday season. I'm going to go ahead and play it here for you. Shane, what are you doing? 
down to existing lots. We have way too much going on there. And I see you using indoor extension cords outside. We never should do that. We need to use outside extension cords that are ready to be out of the elements. Thanks for the advice, Steve. I'll get right on. Just a little uh, safety message. You know, we try to make light of the situation, but it is very important that all members use uh, safety. Fire safety is important throughout the holiday season, throughout the year. Also, always want to emphasize smoke alarms. Having working smoke alarms in your homes is very important in a time when we have visiting, uh, visitors come over, family and friends come over to the house. But just make sure that everybody's just reminded to stay uh, fire safe throughout the holiday season and throughout the year. Please share the video. It's on Facebook, Wichita Fire Department, on our Twitter page also. Thank you.